Hello everyone, Dynamo here. Welcome to episode 5 of Obscure Fixture Media. Today's themes episode is weather. Before we begin, I want to give an honorable mention to the character Storm from Marvel's X-Men, created during the Bronze Age of comic books. Storm is easily the most popular female superhero and is consistently ranked the most powerful among the X-Men characters. Her immense influence and legacy as a prominent character paved the way that diversity in comics was possible and profitable. Not only Storm's beautifully recognizable design, her powers was also another major factor onto why I brought her up. Every writer and artist comes up with unique challenges for Storm's abilities, regarded as near infinite possibilities. She'll be serving as the foundation for the characters whom I'm about to cover for this episode. First character, let's talk about Sarah Rainmaker, one of the founding members of Gen 13, a ragtag group of superhero teens from the Wildstorm universe. Formerly under Image Comics from 1994 to 2004, now currently with DC Comics. Created by Jim Lee, Brandon Choi, and J. Scott Campbell. Sarah made her debut in March 94, Gen 13, issue number 2, volume 1. Before the formation of Gen 13, many adult teens, college students, were tricked through a secret government program called Project Genesis, where they run test experiments on humans by secretly drugging them designed to activate their latent hidden powers. Rainmaker's abilities first manifested from her home, that attracted unwanted attention and was later kidnapped. With the help of Clayton Fairchild, the future leader with super strength, they made their escape, now forming Gen 13. They go on adventures facing their foes and discovering personal secrets linked through a spec ops group called Team 7 and other government operations along the way. So, Sarah Raymaker, who is she exactly? A proud Native American from the Apache Nation based in Arizona, United States. She stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs 135 pounds with long black hair and brown eyes. She is known to be an ardent feminist, the old school kind mind you, and environmental activist who spends her free time going to protest. Also, unlike other members of Gen 13, she is most concerned with social and political issues. Despite all this, Sarah served as a team peacekeeper, voice of reason, whenever a fight break out between the team. Another interesting tidbit about her is that Sarah caused a great deal of controversy in the comic book fandom back in the day, when she proclaimed herself to be a lesbian early on. However, as the series went on, and she revealed she was also attracted to men as well. So the fans of the series were very confused, there was a lot of back and forth going on about her orientation. Finally, turns out Sarah is bisexual. My opinion about this character is that no matter how you see it, you gotta understand this was the 90s and many things that were done back then were considered progressive. It's not like the norms of today where things are a bit extreme in certain areas. Rainmaker is still a fan favorite. Also, another favorite thing I love about her is that she embraces her sexuality at full throttle. Seriously, check out these panels where she doesn't mind showing some skin and have gawky stares from her teammates, male or female. And most of all, she likes keeping herself in top physical condition. Next character we have Weathervane from the action cartoon Lunatics Unleashed, aired for two seasons from 2005 through 2007. In case some of you didn't know what the heck is this type of cartoon is, it's loosely based on the Looney Tunes cartoon characters like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, and what the studio described as action comedy, though with a more darker tone as it takes place in a more post-apocalyptic setting, plus their design reflects that as well, being more edgier and pointy I guess. When fans saw this, they have very mixed feelings about it, but that's a topic for another time. And why does everyone have superpowers? The premise is this, a mysterious meteor falling from the sky striking a city called Acnetropolis, altering their DNA thus giving some people unnatural powers. Then some authoritative figure who is half seen as a hologram shows up and assembles a team of superhero teens and it goes all Captain Planet or Power Rangers from here, depending how you look at it. Anyways, back to Weathervane. Her real name is Paula Hayes who appeared in the episode as an intern at a televised broadcasting station who has the power to conjure small rain clouds on a minor scale. That's how she landed in the job in the first place by predicting the weather. And she dreams of becoming the city planet's weather girl. Aw, how sweet. That position unfortunately has been filled by Misty Breeze, a television personality host famous worldwide. And Paula Hayes serving her as her assistant. The sad part about this episode is that Paula is treated like crap throughout this whole show. Missy herself being a total diva offstage, being rude, narcissistic, and ill-tempered, even going so far as pouring coffee on Paula's head. To quickly sum up the premise, Paula was a fill-in for Misty temporarily during a dangerous storm. 
Lightning struck Paula, altering her appearance while amplifying her base powers to a dangerous degree. It's superhero logic, what are you gonna do? Anywho, now Paula embracing her new self, wanting to seek revenge on Missy, she wrecks havoc on Acmetropolis but was stopped by the Teen Lunatics. Okay now, Weather Vane, she may sound like your run of the mill episodic villain, and yeah, that is true for the most part. But what makes her a tiny bit different from the other villains is that she appeared in about 4 episodes. When you think about it, the standard for these archetypes are about 2 episodes at most and then the rest is just cameo appearances. Paula becomes a familiar face among the fanbase, showing empathy as you will. They see Paula as more of a tragic or misunderstood villain. Observing how she was treated is rather unfair and seeing how her actions are very misguided can lead her to a lot of trouble which gave the lunatics no choice. Fans debate that she may have redeemable qualities even though most of these characters are cookie cutter at best. So for Weathervane, she is a fan favorite due to her having some dimensions in her character. As for the Lunatics Unleashed cartoon, well honestly, I thought this cartoon was a fever dream. Sometimes I forget that this show even existed. The final girl I like to talk about is April from the anime series Darker Than Black, a televised anime original that aired between April 2007 and November 2007. Now I already talked about April from a collaboration video I work with, Big Bros Entertainment. I highly suggest you check out this video here in particular, you'll find some very interesting characters that we covered together. I'll put in the link in the description box below, just in case. Now as for the anime series itself, Darker Than Black, it is one of the very few exceptions where normally you usually get the manga as the original source material and then later it gets adapted into an anime. Darker Than Black is the complete opposite, aired on TV first despite having a very short lifespan. It was adapted into two manga's spin-off series later on. Now, as for April's personality, she is pretty much the opposite of most of these characters within this series. Where everybody in Dark and the Black is very brooding and not getting along with each other, in fact she actually gets along with the rest of her team. Another interesting fact about April is that these contractors, people who have these supernatural abilities, have obeisance, which means that they must pay a price whenever they use their abilities. And most of these users dislike sacrificing a piece of themselves, or offerings and others may have to indulge in certain aspects which they do not enjoy. April on the other hand, she likes to drink alcohol in which she has to consume it in order to use her powers or whenever she activates her powers and she must pay the price. This is pretty ironic because she loves it. Well, that is all I gotta say about April. If you wanna find more, again, check out Big Bros Entertainment. Thank you all for watching, Dynamo out.